Hey, thanks for being with us today. You're speaking here at the Mines and Money Show about um, some of the fundamentals for copper. You know, we've seen supply disruptions at the beginning of uh, 2017, um, some the declining grades coming down the pipeline. With all of that in mind, what's your investment thesis for copper? Is it still strong? Well, let's take a deeper dive. So I was talking about the relationship energy and how that's going to change the pivot towards increased electrification. And if we look back at oil, say 30 years and look at a price graph, it's the dominant commodity. And then you superimpose copper directly on top of that. The ups go with the ups, the downs go with the downs. And now we've seen a decoupling. So recently the, the, the price of oil has rebounded. But if you look back two years, there's a delta where copper has the, the price is decoupled by about 40% from oil and about 30% from gold. And so looking forward, I think that the current price of copper is to, it's over $3 now. And if we go back to the time where all the action, all the M&A activity happened in commodities, 2006 to 2012, the mean of oil was about $100 a barrel. The mean of copper was about $3.50 a pound. With this copper price, if you, it's really like having al almost $100 a barrel oil. Now, that, that doesn't mean too much to most people. Mm. What I'm suggesting is the, the, the grades of all the global copper mines has fallen. And you have to look, what does it cost to make a profit from one ton of copper ore? I mean, it's changed so dramatically in the past six or seven years. Where do these products come from? So the, the demand is completely different. When you go away from fossil fuels, it requires more electrification, but the supply even more so. The world's oil supply comes from 4,700,000 individual wells. 50% of primary copper production comes from only 25 copper mines. So they're, they're, they're totally different. Right. And it takes, you know, 15 years to build a copper mine. And if you're in, a, in, a, in an oil area, it takes, you know, you're of production in six or nine months. Mm -hmm. So I believe mm -hmm. copper is going to be more dear in the future. And the only way to make these lower grade deposits, because that's the future of copper mining, high, high grade, mm -hmm. the days of high grade copper are gone, this is just a fact of, um, of science, that, that ton of ore has to become profitable. And it's very, very difficult at $3 copper to make um, Greenfield's uh, production come, and come into place. So what type of um, metrics should, should potential investors be looking at when they're considering you know, investing in a copper stock, for example? Well, I am an investor. Mm -hmm. And those that know me, they, of course, I'm involved in Copper Bank. I'm the largest shareholder and I'm the executive chairman. And my friend Frank Holmes brought up an interesting point to me just uh, being here in London. Copper Bank has one of the lowest GNA to established resources and reserves. We have two projects with um, resources and reserves. And that's a pretty good metric because what that does is it protects shareholder value on a per share basis. So I think Copper Bank is something that people can look at if you want to have a creative, you know, well-managed, dilution mindful management and our projects, what they required was not a lot of capital, they required higher copper prices. So now that we've seen copper prices rise, we've actually started to enhance our portfolio. So I encourage people to very carefully look at what we did do in 2017, drilling in Alaska, and what we're going to do in 2018, which is um, you know, increased studies, potentially more drilling, and we're looking to uh, re-engineer our copper oxide project in Nevada, looking at a two-stage uh, two development where you would focus on the higher grade core, can enough money be made in a lower copper price environment that you can look at focus on the balance of the lower grade um, reserves there. Mm -hmm. What other companies are you liking right now? I was on your show about a year ago, I think, and I had suggested my two top picks were Copper Bank, mm -hmm. which has doubled since then, and Wealth Minerals. Wealth Minerals is a large uh, consolidation play of lithium in Chile, and it's run by Tim McCutcheon, Hank Van Alphen, and Marcelo Awad, and Marcelo lives in, um, in, in Santiago. Mm -hmm. And what they've done, that share has also doubled, by the way, in the past year. And I, to me, in lithium, that, that's, my, that's still my top pick. I own it, of course, for, for, <laughs> for open disclosure. And I think people need to follow what's happening there. Why? Because there's an election in Chile. And it looks to me like Sebastian Piñera will win the runoff election. And everyone always wonders about the exportation uh, permits in Chile. If this changes, this is a game changer. And for those that follow lithium, you know that the Salar de Atacama is the world's largest source of lithium. And they have a, a giant stake in the northern part of that Salar. So I think that that is prime real estate within the lithium sphere. What, how, can you expand on how it'll change exactly? 
how Chile works is there. It's limited because they they, they called lithium a a, a, a a scarce resource, and it was for, for a military purpose. I think it had to do with the, the the nuclear industry. And you're only allowed to export so much quantity. Now that lithium has become so important to, to battery metals, and they have so many resources and reserves, they're looking about potentially increasing or adjusting the way those exportation permits. And there's only four entities in Chile that you can use to export lithium. So if that changes, it's a game changer. So you're liking Wealth Minerals and Copper Bank right now. Yeah, and I'll give one more honorable mention mm -hmm. for people that want to have a, a punt in cobalt. So I own this, of course, yeah. and it's a global energy metals. And it's a group of people that have been following cobalt for about eight years. And I really like what Mitch Smith and, and his team have done. I mean, it's trading around 13, 14 cents, something like that. So it's kind of, you know, they're executing their plan and they have really good advisors and they're going to start working on their Australian projects. So their, their web, website is also a very good source of information on cobalt. Mm. So that's sort of my one, two, three within the energy metal space. Great. Thanks so much, Gianni. Appreciate it. Thank you.